tonight we're welcoming the very singular Nick Revel, who's a storyteller who's worked, yes, yeah, there's some fans in here already. For those of you who don't know his work, um, a, a recent episode on Radio 4 was entitled, this is just to give you a flavour, Eurasia's Most Eligible Psychopaths and Their Lovely Homes. <laughs> Sounds like a must listen to me. And he will, of course, be in conversation with Tom Walker, a.k.a. your favourite irritable news reporter. So please can I have a massive cheer for Jonathan Pye and Nick Revel. Woo! Well, this is nice. This is the British Library, man. I didn't expect anyone to turn up. I really didn't. Uh, and I'm concerned that everyone thinks they're coming to a Jonathan Pye gig. Yes. And, uh, it's probably worth giving... Oh, yes. A um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bit of a spoiler alert uh, that Jonathan Pye doesn't actually exist. I don't, don't know if you're all aware, aware of that. Tom Walker invented him and played him and is now... Well, how did but you... also, I'm, I'm nowhere near as funny, erudite or intelligent. So um, you can leave now if you were expecting... Expecting real entertainment. Okay, I'll be off. Uh, <laughs> um, how did you put it to me in the email when you said we were doing this event? You said, we're doing the fucking British Library. The fucking British Library. Only the I fucking mean, British it's, it Library. It does feel like, it's, I mean, we're not in the British Library, but it's a British Library event. I know. I write at exciting. the British Library. That's where I go to work. So that's how I sort of know the British Library, because when you're a writer... It's very difficult to sort of go to work yeah. because you work at home and so you don't really get started till three in the afternoon and then what's the point because Rip Off Britain's on and you <laughs> may as well watch that. So coming to the British Library, it's, it, it, it's, um, it's a day's work. You go to work, you come home and, you know. Yeah, you feel virtuous about it. You do, well, also it makes you work because everyone around you in the reading rooms is doing their PhD and you're, and you're just there going, oh, Boris is a cunt. You know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, you know, you, you could debate what is of more value to human well, yeah, yeah. culture, really, isn't it? You know, so uh, what, what do you reckon the purpose is this evening? We're going to entertain, hopefully. Uh, entertain, inform, and oh, that's the BBC, isn't it? Um, uh, well, originally we were supposed to be doing an event and it was for the British Library fake news kind of, they had a, a series of events, but that was six months ago. We were supposed to be doing it in the theatre at the British Library and that had a fire. And now we're here, and we were going to be discussing my fake news tour that had just come out sort of online. But it, that's sort of six months ago now, and it f doesn't feel very relevant. So, so I think we're just going to sort of have a, have a chat. General chat with the purpose of promoting free speech, uh, addressing the state of the world with a satirical edge, uh, perhaps um, with the idea of promoting a world full of peace, love, happiness and understanding, and... Uh, an absence of hate. Uh, and, and we and got we, 90 minutes. Yeah, so... <laughs> the pubs we, are open, so we let's get... Let's <laughs> better get cracking. Let's um, dive in. Uh, I, uh, OK, uh, you uh, ask me questions. I'll, I'll start with questions I know you've been asked before, but uh, it'll get us going. Uh, how, did, how did... What's the genesis of, of Jonathan Pye? Well, I mean, I suppose if ever you've listened to me interviewed, you'll know this, because this is the one everyone asks. But, uh, so I was an out-of-work actor for about 20 years, uh, uh, and I, n I didn't get any work and uh, couldn't get an audition for love nor money and and um, and it, that, that's kind of fine being an out of work actor when you're in your 20s and being poor and being out of work and struggling and getting knocked down and you know finding your feet again but 40 was coming over the hill and I still had no money and, and no auditions and no career um, so I decided to give it up a a and uh, and uh, in doing so, I sort of thought, I'll give myself six months and then that's it. And, and then I'll do a PGCE and just kill myself. Or, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> no offence to, to anybody. You know, so, you know. um, but... Uh, uh, um, they won't hear you. Yeah, yeah that's fine. But, um, and I'd had this character in my head about this newsreader for years and years and years. And then I thought, well... Why don't I do something with it? I'd never done anything with it. It's not good enough. What's the point? You know, it's embarrassing. What if no one watches it? 
And then I did this thing because you go because because I decided to give up. The Jeopardy's gone. Do you know what I mean? There, there was no. It doesn't matter if it's crap because I've decided to give up. No one's going to watch it anyway. It doesn't matter. And I did this video, and it got viewed like a hundred, two hundred times. And that to me was incredible because it meant that people I didn't know had watched it, and that was like wow, that's a real success, you know. So I did one the next week, and that got viewed to three thousand times. And I was like, oh, well, all right. Well, I might do this for a little bit, you know. Um, and then I think it was the third or fourth one, I got a phone call one day going, uh, it's been viewed a million times. And I just, it was, a, it was in, a, in a moment, I knew that my life, if I played my cards right, that this was an opportunity. And I think I wouldn't have necessarily noticed that opportunity had this happened to me, say, 10 years before. But because I struggled for so long, I recognised the opportunity for what it was, and I decided to go for it with sort of both barrels, really. And seven, eight years later, you know, it, it, I can't believe it's still going, and 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 the audience is getting bigger for it. It's still continuing to grow, and, and there are opportunities coming my way with Pi that that I wouldn't have if you know, if I if I hadn't done that. So that's sort of, yeah, that's 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 what? the genesis of, of him, I suppose. But very quickly, I realised, and, and, and I th I'm sure we'll come on to this, that the, the politics was sort of um, by by the sideway for me. Do you know what I mean? I was really in interested in this character and this conceit of a, of, a, of a guy that loses his shit between takes, right? I mean, that's the comedic conceit, and that's what interested me. I thought it was funny, but the first couple I did happened to be political. The first one I did was about Jeremy Corbyn, and it did, all, you know, and then the second week, I thought, well, I might be a weatherman this week, or he might be a sports reporter this week, it doesn't really matter, but that week, um, David Cameron had been accused of um, getting fellated by a pig, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I just thought, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna ignore that, Right, so 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 the second week happened to be political as well, and then and then uh, so I just thought, well, I'll stick with the politics for a bit. But very quickly, I realised people were tuning in for the politics, and so it was a baptism of fire for that first couple of years because I realised I was a political. People saw me as a satirist, a politico, a a a, a political commentator. Whereas actually all I was was an actor who was trying to write some comedy for this comedic conceit. But I knew that the politics was the thing that was going to get the people hooked into it. But did you have an? In, you must have had an interest in politics to yeah, some degree. Yeah, well, absolutely to some degree. I mean, I was certainly a lefty. I was a Guardian reader, and that was sort of ten years ago when the Guardian was sort of good, uh, and uh, you know when it was sort of well written and not not obsessed with sort of identi the identitarian end of of, of, of left wing politics rather than. Uh, well, f f for me, left-wing politics is, is about a financial thing, and I'm sure we'll get onto that. Um, what was I saying? Um, you, you were saying about the drive to, wh what was the drive behind writing? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah, but I mean, politically, I was interested. I was, <coughs> I was uh, Obama's ascent to the White House really hooked me into American politics. Uh, and, and so I've been, uh, American politics is far more sort of fun and interesting. And I, I wonder if I'd say that if I was a, an American, because of course, then it affects you. Of course, Trump being president affected us all, but, but you could sort of look at it from an outsider's point of view. Whereas Liz Truss, you go, oh my God, she's my prime minister. So that's sort of, that's sort of th different. But, but American politics is more sort of fun and interesting because you've got that sort of distance from it, I suppose. You know. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 well, the distance is always important, isn't it? In writing comedy, you have to find an angle that you have to step away from the the reality of it in order to amplify some aspect of the reality. Yeah, I mean, for a, for, 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 for a while, uh, Pi. I think after a year or two, I mean, I would always do them every week, and I don't do that anymore, and because I, I thought it was sort of a law of diminishing returns in a way. And actually, now I'll do one every couple of months, and it's like. Oh, bang, it sort of goes bang. But for a while, I think the comedy really sort of took a back seat for the satirical, not the satirical, the, the political commentary. And I think Pi became a bit dry for a while. Did, did you um, find yourself getting more and more, as you, as you embraced the political aspect, did you find yourself getting more and more angry? Well, ang angry uh, uh, and... 
I was surprised by a couple of things because I wasn't a politico. I was a left winger. I was a sort of a natural Labour voter, but not, you know, stalwart. Uh, hated the to Tories, but not really sort of stalwart. Do you know what I mean? You go, yeah, they're assholes. I'd rather have them. Um, but, but when I first started, what was interesting is every now and then you'd have a pop at the left. You'd, you'd, you'd make a joke about The Guardian or you'd, you'd uh, talk about free speech or you'd talk about uh, uh, the, the censorious kind of nature of the left. Uh, uh, and, and it really amazed me very quickly how awful left-wing people are towards their own. You know, you either there's this real fundamentalist thing in, in left-wing politics. You're either with me 100%. Or if you, di but if you disagree with me on one thing, you're a Nazi. Do you, do you know what I mean? So me coming out with something that I thought was a liberal, left-wing, obviously liberal left-wing position, like free speech is really important. And you'd suddenly get a load of left-wingers going, you know, how dare you? And you go, well, uh, do you, know, you, you know what I mean? I, so so yeah. I think that was a bit of a baptism of fire, of kind of going, oh, Christ, that... Yeah, left-wingers, I think right-wingers have a bit more uh, uh, thicker skin because they're kind of used to it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, if you vote, if you know, everyone that votes Tory goes, yeah, I vote Tory. You know, they, they, they're they expecting it at you. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I think that, that, was a, that was a surprise and made me angry because, because I was being attacked for things that I thought were, were, were obviously, were obvious, but obviously they're not. It, yeah, it, 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 it is interesting, isn't it, that irony of the, the, the party of brotherhood and, uh, and sisterhood and comradeship fall out into tiny sectarian groups. I, a friend of mine, another comic, was telling me, because he was quite involved in SWP and so on, and he knew people in various sort of different Marxist groups, and two of them were merging. Uh, it was probably about 23 people in all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And... Um, and <laughs> Well, it was Mark Steele who told me this, and he said, he said yeah, he said, yeah, it was about eight of them, and they decided that, that they were going to merge, you know, and, uh, and one of them, he, he, he'd voted against it, and he didn't want it to happen, and he had a, this is in the days of Ronio printing presses that people would run their pamphlets and stuff on, he said, so this guy, he said, I'm not letting it get into, <laughs> into the hands of the, you know, People's Front for the Liberation of Judea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he, he, he dug a hole in his back garden and buried this Romeo print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, I don't... I, it, it, it. I mean, Mark, Steele, Mark Steele said something to me once, and, and, <coughs> and, 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 I, and it, was, and it, it's, it, it sums up the state of sort of present left-wing politics. He said, back in my day, when, you know, when he was probably the 80s or whatever, but if you were a left-winger and you met another left-winger... You, the first thing you try and find is where do we have the common ground, right? So if you look at, say, the coal miners and the uh, you know, gay rights uh, uh, activists, and if you went to your average coal miner in the 80s and go, well, what do you think about gay people? You, you, do you know what I mean? I mean, we've moved on a bit, right? But, but they kind of... Instead, you have the, the, these... Uh, you know, the gay rights people propping up uh, the the miners strike and vice versa, right? So uh, as the point being that Mark, Mark was making is, you go back in the day, you, you'd find the common ground and take and start yeah. from there. Yeah. These days, the left wing politics seems to be good. where do we disagree? Yeah, because it, yeah, because yeah. if there is a fundamental thing that I go, I disagree with you, then we cannot have a discussion about anything. Um, I, I found yeah. that quite, quite, quite... Yeah, sort of I mean, useful. obviously, Pride is... The, the film Pride, of course, covers all that in such a beautiful yeah. way. But I wonder where that comes from. Do you think it's the kind of... the zeal of the idealism at the end of it that... I suppose if you've got... If you've got the, the, the more zealous you are about your vision, then you can't brook any uh, objection or questioning of it because if you're looking if you're believing in some perfect system can be achieved, then any questioning of that... Yeah, and, and, and I think there is, a, there is a, a, a... And there's a lot of good that's coming from this, but I think that, that it's true to say that maybe left-wing politics used to be about sort of bringing everyone together and groups and finding that common ground, uh, whereas we sort of, in, in our society today, are obsessed with the individual, right? We're obsessed with that individual is separate from that individual. So actually what... It, it, it 
purports to be bringing everyone together, whereas actually you're labelling that person, that person's slightly different to that person. And, and, and uh, please don't, don't, don't tell me this the wrong way, but you kind of go, you, you'll notice that LGB is now LGBT, LGBTQ, LGBTQ+, plus, da, 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 and, it's, and, and it's like, that, I've got no objection to that, but it's an interesting one of going, you've, we're, we're trying to hone everyone down to this individual, rather than actually if you collectively talk about what we have in common, rather than what we individually have different, whilst, cele whilst celebrating those differences, uh, that, that perhaps more, more would be achieved. And I, and I think that speaks to why left-wing discourse is so, can be so fractious, because everyone's coming from their individual point of view, and my truth, I can't bear that, <coughs> that phrase, well, you know, my yeah. truth, no, it's either true or it's fucking not, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. uh, 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 so, so I think that, that's, that's, that's uh, well, an observation I've made, should we say. Do you, you say you get, you, got, you, you get criticism and slagging off uh, from, from that regard. Do, do you, though, ever find that you're getting feedback where something that Pi has done has actually made people change their perspectives? Do you get any sense on that ever? Well, I, th I think so. But, I mean, you know, if, I mean, that's the thing. You know, the minute I say something you disagree with, you s you'll switch off and you'll never see, you'll never watch it again. You know, I mean, that's the problem. You know, I've watched you for years, but I disagree with you on that point. I'm never watching you again. Well, just and disagree what, with that point, you know. And, and, and let's be honest, Pi is a character. He's allowed to be wrong. He's clearly and he's clearly <laughs> hi hyperbolic. Do you know what I mean? He's clearly a, a, a bigger than life uh, 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 sort of character. You know. Um, it, how do you, on that point? I mean, do, do, what's the uh, what, what's the connection or the continuum between him and you? Do you find yourself watching him as a as a character that you're Obviously connected to, but yeah, I mean, him as a different character. I, 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 well, I, I've got good at watching me back, and I've got, you know, uh, uh, and and like if I'm rehearsing my live show, I can appreciate when a joke is funny in it, and I'll say things like, "I love it when he says that." It's always him. Do you know what I mean? And I'm always going, "Oh, when he walks on." <laughs> well, it's me walking on, but I, I definitely have that. It's, it's him, and it, it it's me. But I really do understand. It never annoys me when people refer to me as Jonathan. That's totally fine. Why would people know my real name? And and also, people expect me to be him. But I get it. I look like him. I talk like him. <laughs> you, do you know what I mean? And and he is different to me. But it's not like uh, you know. If you went up to if Steve Coogan was sat here and you kept referring to him as Alan, that would be weird because they're they're demonstrably different from each other. Uh, I, I, I'm not in in meeting. Uh, I'm, I'm clearly, obviously, not that 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 different from him. But we are very different. But does the does the feedback when you're doing the live gigs differ? Obviously, it differs in in the fact that it's laughter or not, rather than yeah. you know online messages. But I mean, do you do you, do you find there's a difference in the response? One one of the f things that I enjoyed. Uh, always enjoy when I'm in your audience is, and I find this quite actually quite reassuring in the face of that horrible kind of uh, um, antagonism to any disagreement yep. in the life is, is it, on the YouTube stuff is that I really enjoy it when y you'll be tanking into s some particular section and all the audience are laughing and then you'll go down one line where I'll see people Stopping laughing, and then a few minutes later, that turn proportion it, will be different. Do you, do you do you in, do do you consciously uh, put stuff in? There's a difference between putting stuff in, expressing your opinion as pie, and, and knowing they'll be contentious. And one of the things I love is thinking, okay, doing a gag, doing a gag, doing a gag, and thinking, oh, if you didn't like that one, then you're gonna yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, hate yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's well, a kind there, of joy in that, isn't there? There are a couple of things with that, which, which again, it took me some time to work out. I mean, certainly with the stuff that I do online, I mean, there are gags in it, but it's funny and it's amusing and there's probably some laugh out loud moments, but you don't have to sort of structure that gag. You don't, there isn't a laugh, so you don't need, to need a response, so that it can be much more quick fire. But also, I, you have to be conscious, and I'm much more conscious of it now than perhaps I was at the start, that you go, uh, people can... 
Pe people can happen upon my, my online stuff. They're not necessarily looking for it. It might just appear in their Facebook feed. And you have to sort of be a bit respectful of that in a way, right? That, um, and the other thing about that stuff that I put on, it's disposable. It's disposable content. In a week's time, the chances are it's not relevant. I have certain videos that are fairly ever evergreen, but generally, that thing I did about Liz Truss leaving a month ago, well, it's not relevant anymore. It's never going to be seen again, right? Whereas I'd like, I like to make the live shows a little bit more of a piece of work so that they have a bit of longevity to them. But also, you can challenge an audience much more because there is a contract that I have with a paying punter that I don't with a, someone who just happens upon me on YouTube. So you can challenge the audience more. The, the, the general structure of a live show that, that you'll do, it's, it's a game of two halves, right? The, the first half is the, what I would call the low-hanging fruit. It's Trump, Boris, the fucking Tories. The, do you know what I mean? And the stuff that the punter has paid their money for. But then halfway through, you go, well, I, you just pick up a mirror and you go, right, you fuckers. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? And everyone gets really uncomfortable with it. And you go, it's great, because I've got you in the palm of my hand. And now, now I can make you think. And, and that's really inter an, an interesting thing to do that you can't really do on online. Because online, one, people can stop it if the minute they don't like it. And then the, people just... Are fucking horrible online, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? You know, but but in an audience, you'll go. I, I disagree with what he said, but I'll probably continue to watch. But know? there's also the connect. The connection is entirely different, isn't it? Because, yeah. You know, the, going back to what you were saying when you first started conceiving of him and doing the video clips. At that point, had you thought about doing him? Live, or did that come out of a success? No, no. Um, and so it was quite. It was you know it was kicking off and 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 uh, sort of regularly a viral thing. And then I was approached by a promoter to do it live, and I was like, I have no idea. It, surely he's just a three-minute thing, right? He, it wouldn't sustain an hour. But I said, well, I'll, I'll do it. I'm up for a challenge. So I think they, they booked the Leicester Square. It used to, Leicester Square used to have a little studio. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah it's yeah, a bar now, I think. Yeah about 50, 60 people, and I had no idea how, what it was going to be, but but actually, as it turned out, it was... I remember a friend giving me advice, just, just make it better than it needs to be. Do you know what I mean? Just it's make it slightly one. better than people expect it to be. And let's be honest, I'm a YouTube guy who swears at the Tories. I imagine expectations weren't that high. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You know, that I'm sure there are a lot of sort of YouTube stars out there who, you know... I remember one promoter going... I can book you the O2, I can, I can fill it out for you, I can make you a million pounds, and it doesn't matter if you're shit, you'll never work again, but you've won your million pounds, you know? And I just thought, well, I won't be going with you, um, but I suppose if I had a different sensibi sensibility, I would. But, uh, uh, um, and then it went to Edinburgh, and it did really well, and, and I've done four national tours now, uh, but for a couple of years, I, f I felt like uh, I definitely had imposter syndrome. You know, I, 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 I was an actor. I wasn't a stand-up. I wasn't a comedian. I mean, going out on stage in front of a 1,000 people on your own for an hour and 20 minutes, it's fucking terrifying. It's te and also, you're playing a character that wouldn't be terrified by that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So you haven't even... You, you've got to hide those nerves, and, and you've got to go out and... But but the the last tour that that, that you'd have thought and 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 helped me with in um, in that sort of the second iteration of it because it got split in half because of COVID and then had to go back after COVID finish the tour off and suddenly this f half an hour section about Brexit didn't seem to fucking matter anymore so you just had to dump half the show <laughs> and write about COVID but but that that was the the the, the, the first time I was walking out to some beautiful theatres big theatres going. I think I know what I'm doing. I think I think I've got this. I think mm -hmm. I, de I think I deserve to be here. But for about the first five years of Pi, I was going. I am making this up as I go along. You know. Did, did you ever do clubs? Do you ever do comedy no, clubs? No, no. I mean, I did uh, like 15 years or so ago. I, I'd always loved the art of stand-up because I thought I could never do that. I could never do it. Um, so I loved stand up and, and I could I could I'd love a, a bad stand up just as good as a good one. You know, I remember watching a stand up once as well. And it was sort of a revelation. And this guy came on and he was very good, very funny, real good, blah, 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 blah. But I started listening to it and I was like, your material's shit. 
but you're really good and I'm laughing along. And then the next guy came and it was fucking awful. But I thought, I'm going to listen to what he's actually saying. And I was like, your material's brilliant. Mm. You're just a terrible performer. And it, just little things like that. But I, I did try stand up once for about 10 minutes, about 15 years ago. And uh, it was the most terrifying experience of my life. But I did love the experience. But I th I, I'd love to go and do a club for 15 minutes as me, not as Pi to see if I, I think I'd know how to do it now, because I'm sure I've put in enough hours, I would yeah. imagine. But I'm not a club comic. Uh, um, I, I was saying to you earlier, the amount of comics I've been, for, well, for one reason or another, and they're about to go on, and you kind of go, oh, what are you doing tonight? And the comic goes, oh, I hadn't thought about it. And you go, how can you walk on stage and not know what you're going to do? But a lot of comics kind of work that way. They just kind of riff and... and uh, if you're doing it all the time, then it's all, yeah. no, it's no, all no, there to no, be no. pulled down, of course. The idea of, apart from tonight, the idea of walking <laughs> on stage not knowing what the fuck <laughs> I'm going to say is, is, is absolutely terrifying. One of the interesting things that I, I, which I really liked, I mean, you, conceive of it, you conceive of it, you don't conceive of it as a stand-up performance at all, really, do you? How do you put I, it I, I don't, but I, you, you're aware that it's that the audience is there for stand-up, stroke, comedy, character comedy, stroke. That there definitely has to be a diatribe about the Tories, right? <laughs> so you, you've got to hit those people. But I think of it as a character piece. I think of it as I write it as a play. That he's he's got to. The, my rule is he's got to leave the stage in a different state to how he walked on he's got to have been through some sort of journey by the time he leaves the stage there's got to be a story a plot of some sort uh, uh, um, but I'm a, I, I can't work out if I'm cheating or if that's what most stand-ups do they pretend to be a stand-up because I'm just I'm just I mean I word for word the start of the tour and the end of the tour will be pretty much exactly the same there is there's no room for riffing so you know, it amazes me when people go, see, do you just make it up? What, just did, what, for four minutes <laughs> down, a down the barrel of a camera? It's like, are you, are you kidding? I, ca I can't make that, that up. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I know, and I know a lot of people would just go, well, you were just swearing, you know. Yeah, but it takes time to write those swear words. You know? it's, <laughs> it's fun, isn't it, to make swear words more than just... Well, you can, make it in, you can make poetry. You can, you can, it, it can be Shakespearean in, in, in its, you know, like Malcolm Tucker. It's, it's, he's, a, he's a Shakespearean character. I, I mean it. I'm not being, you know, it's, it's like his language is, it's, it's, I mean, and Pi's language is a height. No one talks like that. No one talks that fast, that well, and that sweary. And, and, and manages to b b position an argument in three minutes. No one can do it, but you believe it because well, I'm mean, just a fucking great actor. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but, but, but you, you cheat it. You write it that way. It, 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 it sounds real. No one talks like Malcolm Tucker. No, no one, you know, d talks like, you know. Yeah. So when you're talking about Shakespeare and swearing, it, Phil, Phil Jupiter once described Stephen Burkoff as Shakespeare with Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely image. Um, so you, you, do you feel, do you feel a catharsis when you're, when you're venting the rage? By the, you know, I mean, well, in front of an audience and it's getting that response. Is oh, oh, I, I mean, it, it, de it depends. I mean, if in, in an audience, if if it's in front of an audience, by the time it's in front of a full theatre. <sighs> It's a performance and it's a technical exercise. Do you, do you know what I mean? In, in yeah. a really fun, performative but way. But, but, a but, it, but it is all smoke and mirrors. I mean, it, it's, you know, you do go, oh, at this point he shouts, at this point he... Do you know what I mean? I, I think it's slightly different with the online stuff because that's a pretty quick turnaround, you know? I mean, you can, I can write a piece... That's, there's a news article one day, I'll make some notes, the next day I'll write it and the next day I'll shoot it. Well, actually, in that moment, you've, if, I've, if I'm writing about something that I genuinely do care, I mean, writing about Brexit for three years, God, that was interminable. How to get passionate about that? I mean, I know it's annoying, and it's, uh, you know, and it makes those of us that, that wanted to stay in the EU angry, but after three years of it, you're like, how yeah, do you... Yeah. But, but if I'm talking about, I don't know, the NHS or, 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 or free speech in comedy or something, you know, and you're suddenly there in the moment in the middle of the street, Performing it, and then you can go right. Come on, let's let's mm. let's give let's 
punch this with a bit of uh, um, truth, you know. And those acute bits of topical stuff, will you select them? I mean, I know that, you know, when I'm reading the papers, you suddenly see something think, I really want to get you. I really want to, yeah. you know, I really want to find something that might hang around your neck or just, you just feel a real focus to the anger sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I think, like I say, I, for, for years, I, I, I and, and I'm glad I did it, but I was really disciplined and it was one a week. One a week. If I if I miss a week, because also I was because I've been out of work for so long, you're terrified that this modicum of success will just go, and so I was terrified for years ago. If I don't put something out this week, if I put something out the next week, they'll all have gone. Do you know, I mean, it was silly, but I but I understand where I was kind of coming from. Now, like, I imagine by the end of this year, you'll go. Well, I only put five videos out. But it's because something's captured my imagination. Now, with, when trust left, you go, I've got to do something about that. I've, you know, I, I have no right to call myself a, a UK political satirist if I'm not going to lay into her. So there are certain beats you have to... Boris is leaving. Right, we've got to do that. But, you know, they're, they're at the moment, I haven't written anything for, for, for the online content for, for a month or so. And then this week, I suddenly went, oh, there's a nurse's strike coming up in a couple of weeks. I can manufacture some fucking anger on their behalf. Do you know what I mean? So you go, okay, so already the cogs are ticking, but you go, I can have, I haven't done anything for, for a couple of months, so people will be interested to see what I've got to say. And you go, well, everyone's striking. Um, this, is, this is really easy for me to know which side of the fence I'm on. Yeah. I support them wholeheartedly, even though you're about to fuck up my Christmas. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, um, so, so, so that's sort of... Now, I, I, I think the quality of the stuff I put online is better because you go, this has interested me. Yeah. You know what I mean? As opposed yeah, to, course. I've got to do something about the fucking budget yeah. this week. Or, yeah. or Brexit, which went on forever. It's still going on. It will go on forever. But, you know, for three years there, that, that was the headline every night, right? Brexit yeah. is fucked. Yeah, and it is. And when you the get weather. to the repetitive, yeah. like when you're writing on topical shows and you're doing your fourth year of writing, oh, it's party conference season. Or yeah, 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 know, yeah, yeah. But and they sort of come round again and you go, I'm yeah. sure I did something about the Queen's speech yeah. last year. Fuck it, you know. Why, why didn't the joke work? Yeah, why didn't, yeah, why didn't yeah. the joke stop this problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, I mean, do, that's another thing, actually. Do you, I mean, so the motivation is, is partly just <laughs> to have some work and partly to vent and target the kind of things that you talk about. But do you ever think about, uh, is it realistic to think about it changing anything? I suppose it's a question no, we no. all either no. ask ourselves or ignore. No, I don't, no, it's not realistic. And, 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 uh, and I don't, that's not a motivation for me because I think it's unrealistic to go me, Let's be honest, generally preaching to the converted, right? If you, if you, if you subscribe to Jonathan Pike, you probably agree. I'm not really persuading many. I'm sure a, if, you, if you're uber fans and you've seen everything I've ever done, I imagine a few of those videos, you've gone, actually, I've never thought of it like that, and it may have persuaded you. I, I, so, I, I, so there's that. Right? I mean, it, presumably but, a lot of you have seen him either live or on YouTube. Or They've I got mean, no idea who I am. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, they had to tell me in the yeah. dressing room. But, um, it's, I mean, do, do you f when you've seen him working, do you feel a kind of sense of, I don't know, com comfort or anything when you've seen him raging? I, 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 think, I think there is, uh, there's a difference between changing the world oh, and, 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 and providing catharsis for people. Sure. Because that's what Pi really is, is, is you go, he's... You go. There's there's a real joy in knowing you're not alone in the world at hating Matt Hancock, all right, right? <laughs> but then you go, I fucking hate Matt Hancock, and that's what you think. And you've been going around yeah. for a week going, I fucking hate Matt, Matt Hancock, <laughs> and then you got three minutes of a go going, I fucking hate Matt, ha Matt Hancock because he's uh, this and he's that, and you go, oh god, this is this is what I think, right? And that's yeah. why he's yeah. shareable because also, uh, particularly on say Facebook or Twitter or, or, or whatever, we present ourselves as we would like to be seen right like no one's facebook feed is actually true right <laughs> you know you well, present depends oh, what time you go holiday. on yeah 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 <laughs> look, look at my happy marriage drink. you know and it's all bullshit right <laughs> but but so what you're doing is you're presenting yourself right and therefore if pi says something that you agree with you're going 
this is what I think. So he does the politics for you. So there is a, there, there's, you know, yeah. there's a catharsis there. But I think changing, uh, changing the world or, or ch changing... I mean, th there's one thing that I... There's one of these videos that is rather evergreen, and it was, it was trying to persuade kids to... Uh, there was an upcoming election, and the uh, date to register to vote was coming up, the last moment you could register to vote. And it was all about... Whatever, it doesn't matter what you think, just register to vote. At least have the option to blah, 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 blah. And, and it, 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 it did really, really well. But I do meet a lot of, a lot of people that kind of go, and it seems to be this particular video. You go, oh, I'm studying politics at Oxford. You, you were the, that video was the thing that switched me on to politics. And you go, well, that's, I suppose I've changed the world in a, a little bit there. But I, I, I certainly don't have a, have a, 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 a heightened sense of it. It's a comedy act. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I know that. I, yeah. You know, I mean, although, well, first I was going to say, you know, that person who told you they're studying politics, they're Oxford at the moment, in 25 years, you'll be doing a ranting video yeah. celebrating their fucking. resignation. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I think it, yeah, obviously, I think maybe the main point, isn't it, is, is letting people know they're not alone, really, if there's any kind of serious uh, intention to it. You know, that was just I don't know if that's that. no. I mean, I mean, we are all alone, all well, alone. Look, 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 the reality <laughs> is, it's like I, I you know, uh, I, I made a YouTube video, it became successful, and I'm still here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so I don't. I'm sure there are noble, noble reasons for me to do this, but I've yet to discover any. <laughs> <laughs> Um, where am I oh, yeah, so you did Edinburgh, didn't you? You did a run in Edinburgh in, what, 2016, 15, 16? 16. Mm, 16. Yeah. Uh, and how was that, that was a baptism of fire as well. I mean, because Edinburgh, if you, if you do Edinburgh, you get one night off for the month, uh, which is insane. Uh, uh, it was a real baptism of fire because th that was right at the start of my sort of live comedy career, so I didn't really know what I was doing. And also I encountered the rest of the UK comedy community, and they are fucking <laughs> delightful. They, <laughs> they really are. Uh, I, I kind of got it. I mean, it, 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 I was this guy who'd done a YouTube video who was selling out the Pleasance at Edinburgh, and these guys had spent 20 years doing the circuit. So I can... I can it's to that resentment is totally understandable, but I've taken some real shit off... off of comedians, and I find that uh, that's another thing that surprised me. You kind of get in the acting world, everyone's a bitch, but they're bitches behind your back. In the <laughs> comedy world, to your face, to your face, you know. Um, it's and very what, what, what were they having a go? The people who were having a go at you were resenting it. W was it the nature of the act, or was it simply professional jealousy that you? I, I don't know. Success? I mean, I, I don't know. I think. And, al and also, that w when I well, did start to do the, the, st uh, the occasional thing that would, say, be anti-left, mm. that's when they really, oh, my God, this, this guy is a, you know, uh, um, you know, an alt-right stooge. You, you know what I mean? Or a useful right. idiot for the right, or, what, or whatever these, these sort of terms are. And, and, um, and did you get that to your face, though? Or was that online stuff? What kind of stuff would people say to your face if, if they ran into you drunkenly? At well, well, I mean, I suppose most people are sort of polite-ish in a kind of... You'd walk into a green room in Edinburgh and everyone's eyes would turn and then, and then you, you, you could just feel it. You could, you could feel it. It's, it's, not, it's not there so much anymore because I've been here long enough to people go, oh, it, it looks like he's sticking around, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, so I'm just... Yeah, I just... Uh, I find that tiresome really I mean it's uh, but it's certainly not a very welcoming world uh, I think uh, it's, uh, I, or, or it's, uh, in it, my experience it, you know. yeah it, I think it was when it first started off there was maybe fewer of us and there was much more of a sense of everybody but it's also that sense of you're either with me 100% or you, 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 it, there is that vibe you know you know you do anything wrong you you you, you know I mean we don't want to spend all evening talking about free speech and comedy, but I mean, in the seven or eight years I've been doing this, that, that, that that's become a real issue. I I think. Would you, you that that I went to see Jerry Sadowitz a couple of weeks ago at the Hammersmith Apollo. I'd never seen him before. Uh, uh, I had an offer to go and see him 
about a year ago, and I and it was a free ticket, and I was like, I'll take it. And then they said, yeah, yeah, front row seats. I was like, fuck that. I'm not going <laughs> to Jerry Sadowitz on the front row. No, I'm not doing that. When I went to see him at the Hammersmith, Apollo, it was an incredible tour de force. It, he was an it was incredible. And he used language that I've never heard a comic say before, real nasty stuff that out of context you go, well, this guy's clearly some right-wing fucking nasty bastard. But at no point were you going, this is clearly a left-wing liberal comedian. Yeah, yeah. Like, like there, there is, you've got to be fucking stupid to be taking what he's saying at face value. Uh, uh, do you know what I mean? And uh, I think that's the problem, is, is, the, is the, that, like, like with comedy particularly, context and intent is everything. And if you start to take context and intent away, then anything is offensive. Anything is potentially yeah. awful. You know? I, think, I think with Jerry, what I admire about him is that I admire any comedian who can be offensive and particularly if I disagree with a lot of what they say, but they still make me laugh. That's a real... Yeah. Uh, but the thing with Jerry is, obviously, he always goes out on... A limb offensively, <laughs> but he always there's always a there's always a, a, a an extra element. It's never just an there's offensive an line, and normally it comes back at, at him. him. At him, you know, it's it, it's it, it really is. Um, I mean, I, 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 this was a sort of a formative moment pre pie but I went to see Frankie Boyle uh, uh, and and uh, <laughs> and he's a, you know like anything it's a matter of taste i suppose but i but i, I think he's a, de a, a decent comic and and um a very good comic and i was sat and he was coming out with awful things it's frankie boyle's stick and i remember at one point howling with laughter at one thing and then leaning back and my friend sat next to me was like that yeah oh god and about five minutes later he said something and i went oh fucking hell <laughs> frankie and i looked and to m and my mate was howling with laughter. And you go, there you go, that says it all. One, the line between offence and comedy is like wafer thin, but it's, it's very, it's personal. And if you bought a ticket, that's the contract you yeah. have signed. You've yeah. signed a contract going, okay, uh, um, entertain me, possibly offend me, possibly, you know. There's one specific incident um, which, I don't know, probably a lot of you are aware of the the piece that you did about the uh, the Nazi pug. Yeah. Um, can you? Uh, I'll let you. I suppose this was my first everything. first foray into to having a sort of a look at free speech and comedy. But for those of you who don't know, this was about I don't know four or five years ago. There was a YouTube guy a guy called Marcus Meachin, I think his name is, uh, a sort of a YouTube comedian, you'd say, but I think they call them shit posters. You know, just someone who kind of just you know, does stuff on YouTube, whatever. I suppose I'm one of those, really. <laughs> um, but he taught his dog... His, his girlfriend thought that this dog was the cutest thing in the world. And he wanted to prove that this dog wasn't by teaching it the worst thing you could teach a dog to do. And I apologise if you're offended by this, but this is what he did. He taught his dog to do a Nazi salute to the phrase, gas the Jews. Awful. Awful. But you'll notice there's some titters of laughter out there, right? There's a couple of... It's a question of taste, right? Some of you get the joke. Some of you get the joke and still think it's fucking appalling, right? <clears throat> he was arrested. He was convicted of a hate crime. Uh, he was convicted, essentially, of, of um, enticing... Nazis, whatever, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I, I don't think anyone who was even perhaps, perhaps seriously considering joining the Nazi party saw that <laughs> video and went, fuck, where do I sign? <laughs> you know, it was clearly a joke. It was clearly a very fucking distasteful joke. But the guy is a convicted criminal, uh, and and I don't believe that, that that he should be context. The context and intent of that video was, that, you know, that's the, but, but see, that's the key thing for me because um, when I heard about it, and there was quite a lot of action on the uh, and division in the comedy community about whether it was acceptable, whether it should be defended or not. My gut feeling was, firstly, well, actually, 
he, it was a Trojan horse to use that particularly absolutely pernicious phrase. And my thought was, well, if he did want to offend his girlfriend by teaching the dog to do a Nazi salute, he could have chosen a slightly, a slightly nicer anti-Semitic phrase for the dog to lay, which I'm, you know, I'm aware of the ironies and paradox of that. But, but I thought that's a Trojan horse of to, to use that particular phrase, and that's why I didn't. Yeah. I mean, th that's and, what makes the act so horrendous, of is course. the use of that phrase. And, and, and I also had the gut feeling, because I was, and I thought, my gut feeling is this is Trojan horse rather than a very dis just a very distasteful joke. And then I thought, well, you've got to actually overcome your gut feeling if you do believe in freedom of speech until it's clearly definable as a hate crime or incitement. Well, also, that, I th but I th but the, the, what, really, what really shook me was the nature of what the judge said in making the, in making the judgment, which was... That context and intent isn't important. That don't count, which, of course, is absolutely... Which is absolutely... Especially in a court of fucking law, right? I mean, context and intent. Did you mean to kill this person? <laughs> Did you intend to kill this person? Uh, you, do you know what I mean? I mean that you know. Uh, um, so, so, so that 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 was. Um, I mean, I think the problem is in that video. I kind of went, where are the comedians here? Where are they? You should be up in arms. And I and and in 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 retrospect, I maybe shouldn't have done that because I was definitely throwing down a gauntlet to the comedy community and therefore opened myself up for attack. But I was called. Uh, a Nazi, a Nazi sympathizer, a, a you know, uh, by comedians, um, which made me realize uh, I, I, I know I'm right about, about that one. Well, you, you yeah, know we've, what I mean? We've you disagreed know, and know. argued about this a lot. You know. But also, it's that but, but assumption of bigotry that, that, <laughs> that we have. You, you assume that someone has bad, no, ba uh, bad motives. I thought Jim, Jimmy which, Carr did a really tasteless joke got into trouble earlier in the year which was uh, essentially uh people don't talk about uh all the all the um uh roma community that died in the holocaust because no one wants to talk about the positives right awful terrible joke he had set it up to be fair as this is the worst possible thing you can say right what i found really interesting about this furor in january february i don't know if you remember it is if you look at the headlines in most of the uh, uh, newspapers when they were referring to this story, Jimmy Carr tells Tasteless, in inverted commas, joke. And they kept doing this, they kept putting joke in inverted commas. And I was like, are you trying to imply that it wasn't a joke? Because that is what you're doing. You're implying it wasn't a joke. And what you're therefore doing is you're actually implying that Jimmy Carr genuinely thinks it's a good thing to mass slaughter the Roma community, which is clearly not the... So that's what I found really interesting about that, is that that, that is disingenuous to imply... It, you can, we can discuss till the cows come home whether it was a tasteful joke, whether he should have said the joke, whether Netflix should have censored that joke and cut it out. Uh, we can talk about that, absolutely, but let's, let's, let's grow up and all agree it was definitely a joke. Or w would you disagree? Uh, <laughs> I suppose in its technical construction, it was a joke. But again, it, it's strange how... If I see Sadovitz or Frankie Boyle, you know, I'll object to some of them, but not in the way that... I, I, I agree I with think, you. Jimmy Carr's joke had, had a nastiness to it. He, I think... That, 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 but, but I think the thing with free speech, and it's a trope, but it's a trope because it's real, if you genuinely defend free speech, you are genuinely defending someone's right yeah, to say something absolutely. that you fundamentally disagree with yeah. or tell a joke that you fundamentally hate. It's, free speech isn't just for the people you agree no, exactly. with. Exactly. Or for the comedians that... It's not just for comedians that write the jokes that are to your taste. Of course. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, oh, no, I, I agree. It, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it... it, it you know, we have, we've had yeah, this conversation yeah. many times, you know. I think the other weird thing, though, is somehow it, it's... Um, I, I just... When, when it's just... When it's calculated purely in a, in a really cold way to create that kind of furore, rather than having a, some kind of sense of integrity behind it, even if it's exactly the same 
joke. I, I can, I, I, mean, I can if feel you, the if difference, you want to but that's not it, enough to it, ban one you, and accept the other. Absolutely, but if you deconstruct Jimmy Carr's joke, what he's essentially doing there, which is a, a comedic trope, is going. He, he sets the joke up by saying, "No one ever talks about the however million." Mm -hmm. No, and, and it sounds like a middle class statement that you'd yeah. have around any dinner table, right? There's sort of a discussion about blah blah blah, and then it's it's counterbalanced by the granddad at the end of the table saying yeah. something absolutely horrendous, right? So I suppose it's it's sort of quite a classic. Yeah. joke. I, 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 I defended this joke on, I think it was LBC or something, and the next day um, the Metro, and the headline was, uh, Jonathan Pye says, uh, Jimmy Carr's joke was, was technically a very good joke. <laughs> You're just like, oh god, I didn't mean for that to make the papers. Um, it's, it, well, we're ten to eight now. Sure, uh, 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 has anybody got, are you ready with that? So we'll throw, we just throw it out to Q&A a little earlier than normal just so it doesn't feel like we're just charging through a list of your questions before we get to the end. And we might come back to just us talking, but we, let's, let, let's um, go for a question. From this gentleman if anybody's here is got great. A gentleman up. here with his hand up. Yes, yeah, coming down. Yeah. Um, First of all, thank you very much for uh, the discussion. I hope it is going to continue. Uh, also, Nick, can I say thank you for showing your solidarity and support for Ukraine uh, oh. so blatantly, because I think we need not to forget about that. Um, my question is for Tom, or for Jonathan. Um, speaking uh, as a former BBC journalist, <laughs> do you have BBC journalists come up to you and say, I wish I could speak like that, because that's yeah. what I really think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've had to... Uh, when you walk round... Like, if, if, I'm, if I'm filming a pie round the Houses of Parliament, like College Green, you know, it's, like, full of politicians and it's full of, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, journalists. Yeah, j journalists are much nicer to me than comedians are. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're, they're really... Interesting. And, and even right-wing journalists love it and the left-wing ones love it and... and and what I like is, which I find a real compliment from, from the actor in me, a lot of journalists go, were you a journalist? Did you used to work in telly? You know, and you go, oh, well, I'm doing something right, because clearly, clearly he's, he's believable. Um, so, so, yeah, I've, I, you know, and I, you know, I've met a sort of a few, a few journalists. John Sopel, lovely, the nicest man in television. Me and, we've, we've had a... A point, do you know what I mean? And and uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The jur journalists are lovely, and I think they appreciate it, whether they agree with it or not, because they like the conceit. So they're a bit more on it from my end of it, not not so much the politics, but the conceit. So yeah, yeah. I, I particularly like the uh, the bit that you did at the COP in Glasgow, where you took the earpiece out so that you couldn't hear your. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that was do you, do, you have, do you get that kind of uh, des desire yourself, or did you, to kind of just go off script or off? Mm. I tend to come off far too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, that is where Pine comes from, is I've seen newsreaders on the news say something that's just idiotic or just crap, and I just think they're just, because they are just reading it. You know, a newsreader is, I mean, they a lot of them have, write their own script, but they are just sort of reading it. And you go, they must on occasion go, that is bullshit, absolute <laughs> fucking bullshit, and now the weather, you know. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, that's, that's where he, he is born from, you know. Uh, where's the next one? Oh, I, I, I'll Can leave you, you to choose. I can't I really see whilst the, uh, whilst the, um, the microphone's finding the person oh. in the audience, we've got uh, several questions have come from our online audience. So I'm just going to give you a couple okay. wrapped into one, if that's all right. Yep. Um, somebody uh, writing in from Italy says, do you pay a personal price psychologically by being immersed in the tiny space between UK politics and the horror of what's actually happening in society? And then <laughs> to add to that, there's a sort of... <laughs> On a the slightly answer to lighter that is note, I'll yes. Just, can I <laughs> Next <laughs> question. <laughs> Next question, and there's oh, a few on, on no, this I've thing. Got a, I've got a, a, an additional answer to that. We, we, uh, I think we found solace in uh, in that gap last night with a w w by consuming a, a very noble Italian product, didn't we? We had, we, I, my handwriting on my notes got progressively less legible as we got to the fourth we, we martini had, we last had a, night. We had a, just a very but I'm, I'm basically, I've turned into a middle-class wanker. I love 
a vodka martini. So the and we vodka had martini between one and four helps. yesterday. Italian culture shit gets face. us through. <laughs> The other questions are related to being a middle class wanker, I suppose, tangentially, because they're. Uh, I'm your guy. They're, they're, they're she about works at the British Library. It's you you. called him a middle class wanker. It's about getting out the vote, and one of them says very concisely, how to get a socialist into power? Question uh, mark. Oh, well, Jeremy Corbyn didn't work out. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, I really liked the, the, the idea of Jeremy Corbyn and, and, you know, the idea of a socialist in charge of a, a, a left-wing party. I mean, imagine that, you know. Uh, uh, but, but clearly Labour isn't, isn't electable unless it's in the centre, and that's understandable. But, yeah, I mean, socialism has become, it's become a dirty word, isn't it? And... and, and and it really isn't. Because also we think of, like, if you, get, if you go to America and you say the word socialist, they go, commie bastards, you know? And it's like, no, it's not communism. It really isn't. Socialism is, a, is, is I think, uh, the way I would sort of think of it, it, it is a reaction to the s excesses of capitalism. Like, without capitalism, socialism doesn't really exist. Cap socialism works in a capitalist society, right? And, it, and all it, to me, it is, is spreading the wealth out a little bit. And I think we can all get on board with that. And yet, we all seem so scared by the idea of socialism. How you get one into number 10, I, 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 I don't know. But what is interesting is, is that the unions, I mean, you know, we have, if you're working class, you have been shat on for well over a decade now. You have been shat on. You, 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 you know, you had austerity, which was on the back of a banking crash. You know, the banking crash happened, then we got austerity. It's like, why are we paying for this? It's exactly what's happening right now. Liz Truss lost us £40 billion overnight, and we're suddenly getting fucking our taxes raised and, and, and our public services being cut. Because she fucked it, how dare you? And yet, and yet, if you look at most of the press, they go socialism. <sighs> it would kill this planet. <laughs> Take back control. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's in, it's insane to me. It's insane to me. Thank you, one person. Uh, um, that's what they came for—a bit of the old pie rants, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, uh, I, I don't think we should be afraid of, of socialism. And 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 I think. Keir Starmer is missing a trick. We, we are ripe for this next few months, this, this round of strikes, these unions who, who've some, from somewhere found some balls because the workers have finally had enough because, infla I mean, inflation is at 11%, but food inflation is going to hit 20%. Do you know what I mean? You can't afford to feed your fucking kids. I think Keir would... I've been really impressed with Keir over the last couple of weeks, if I may say so. Him bringing up private schools, masterstroke. Like, you, do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, um, uh, I, I'm not th that keen one way or the other of, of reform of the Lords, but him bringing that up, now's the fucking time. But I think he should, he should maybe not a massively full-throated support, but he should support this. Well, I, ca I can't th th see why he's not. I can't see why he's not. All right, I know that Labour used to be owned by the unions and they only became electable when they managed to sever that a little bit. But I think the general feeling in the country, annoying as it is, is that these nurses don't go on strike because they're lazy greedy fuckers. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you might think that about train drivers. Do you know what I mean? But not nurses. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and the fact that nurses, teachers, lecturers, barristers... Do you know what I mean? This isn't like cold fucking coal miners. It's barristers going, this government has fucked the legal system to the point it doesn't work anymore. We're going on strike. Um, and, I, and I think with the, with the right type of support you could get the, 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 the country behind behind that. And I don't know why Keir is so sort of... I mean... The I get it, but I don't think it's a right they're tactic. They're pouring shit into all our beaches down the rivers to pay the massive dividends to the largely foreign shareholders. You'd think that Labour would at least point out to the landowning trout fishing community that it's, you know, the system is destroying their sport. I mean, yeah, that yeah, might yeah. lead to some yeah. kind of uh, uh, critical 
uh, critical attack on 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 the establishment. I, mean, I, I, I was thinking press. about I'm it. just devising a policy. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trout <laughs> trout fishing. Trout is fishing the to, is is the, That's is the top of the Labour manifesto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yes. Hi. Um, Hello. Uh, could you talk about the, the New York Times gig and how that has, how you put that together? And sure. So uh, um, the New York Times approached me. I've done. I've only done three things for the New York Times, and it was sort of, we'll do it every every now and then, I think. But the New York Times uh, approached me to do a piece for them about. I think the first one was about Boris. Um, it's, it's odd. I think four or five or six years ago, I'd have found it really difficult because, of course, it's the New York Times, so there's an editorial bent there. They have, they have a, an agenda. And so I'll present them with a piece, and, it, and there is a lot of negotiation with it in a way that I wouldn't normally do for anyone, right? But actually, I'm at the stage where I've, I've done it long enough. You go, actually, this is a challenge. This is interesting. This is the New York Times is marking my homework. That's not bad, right? They, they fact check it to shit. You know, if I'm a number out, then then it's got to go. And you go, well, that, that surely makes it better. You can't just call Boris a cunt. So you go, OK, well, I've got to find something better to call him. And therefore, it's sort of... It, Did you it, manage it, that ever? Are you, uh, yeah, once or twice, once <laughs> or twice. I mean, in, in my last show, there was a, about a three-minute set piece of just insults at Boris. They, they were great. Um, I can't remember a single fucking one of them, though. Um, but some of them are great. Um, uh, but, but uh, so, yeah, so, so that's came about, and I've done two or three with them. The, the, the second one I did was about uh, Russian money kind of infiltrating London. I mean, it's everywhere. It's, you know, we, we, we are basically... I mean, that's our industry now, is a property market that's overinflated by billionaires owning Pall Mall. I mean, that's, that's what, what we do now. i got a friend who um, works for one of these uh, kind of future predictions company, you know, experts from various different fields of yeah. journalism and uh, uh, institutions and so on. And he rather sardonically is uh, saying that the only way we're going to survive as a country the United Kingdom of England and England, which it will be yeah, in about yeah, yeah, 10 years, yeah. um, is, is to join the axis of evil officially, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. laundering all their money. And, yeah. You know, that's the yeah. only way we're really going to survive. Yeah, London grad, they, they call, call it. Yeah. You, know, no, you, you, know. got into, you got into trouble, did, well, you got attacked in the right-wing press for that, didn't you? Actually, it wasn't that one, but oh, I, 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 th I think the, the, the Russian one set me up for a fall, which I'm sure we'll Russia go into. Today and so... Yeah. so Want to go back to talking about? Let's Russia. do that. Let's do that if you like. But 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 what was interesting with the, the third New York Times one I did was about trust, and she just got in, and I wanted to go to town on her because I could see how dangerous she was. Com even compared to Boris, you go, no, she's a fundamentalist, and she's also she's a fundamentalist that, who doesn't have any real beliefs. She's a fundamentalist as long as it gets her where she's fucking going, right? And the New York Times really reined me in. They like you cannot attack a prime minister on day one and call her a liar. And the and I rem I had a really big argument with the New York Times. Go, she is a fucking liar, and I can demonstrate it to you in two minutes. Anyway, they made me cut it down quite a bit. Blah blah blah, or, or just just pull it back. And, and I suppose to a certain extent they're right. You go, it's it's not a good look to do a hatchet job on a prime minister twenty four hours in, right? Um, <laughs> but. The right-wing press went for me on that, but they were primed because of this Russia thing, which we'll, we'll, we'll go into. Um, what was interesting was, of course, is, is that all the right-wing press, and it was the Times, the Mail, the Telegraph, they all, fuck, and it was things like um, Kremlin-linked actor, because there's this connection with Russia today, which we'll go into. Um, what was interesting is a few weeks later, she left office because she was so fucking awful. And all the right-wing press was suddenly going, yeah, she's the worst. Blah, blah. And it, it sort of annoyed me that you go, the New York Times really could have let me go for it. Do you know what I mean? Because come the, because four weeks later, it would have come full circle. And you go, I fucking told you. Um, just incidentally on Liz Truss, that it's the one little bit of, of... I mean, Rishi Sunak's fucking awful, right? But if you have one or the other, you'd take Rishi, right? Um, because... Presumably, he's not fucking insane. Um, 
But, but uh, the fact that she only lasted four weeks gives me some hope that even the Tory party just went, we, no, fuck, <laughs> come, we, come on, Rishi, come, you know. Um, I'd have taken Boris back over that. You know, I would have, I would have. But, but it, it does give me some hope that there is, there was a recognition that she was, if she wasn't insane, then she's fucking insane. Do you know what I mean? Um, she was awful. <laughs> That's the end of that. Right. Russia. 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 Come on. Let's, Russia today. Let's do this so bit. you, when you first started, Russia. Uh, what, it was very early on, wasn't it? You, after it was uh, after this after this one viral one that was the fourth thing that I did. Uh, uh, this thing went viral, and this this news uh, TV news. Uh, channel that I'd never heard of called RT, Russia Today, came and they said, would you, uh, could we show your material on our YouTube channel and we'll pay you? Yes. <laughs> um, yes, yes. And it was like four, four, five hundred quid a week to write a three minute thing and put it, and I, bear in mind, I had no experience. I'd never written really anything in my life and blah, blah, blah. And it's like suddenly I had a deadline every Friday. It had to be in. I had to write it. I had to do it. And those initial six months, that's how I learned how to do Pi. And it meant that I was earning a bit of money from it. So I didn't have to do all the shit jobs that I've been used to doing. It was a huge opportunity for me. And at the time, no one gave a Fuck. No, I mean, I wouldn't do it now uh, because, we're, you know, uh, Russia is uh, where we're at, right? But when I was doing it, I mean, Putin was still coming to tea with the Queen. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't really... Um, but I get into a lot of shit for it, and, and it's really understandable. The, the, the Most people that give me shit for it are, are middle-class, Guardian-reading, privately-educated wankers who have no idea what it's like to not have choices in your life. Um, it, it was a no-brainer. Someone was offering me for what at the time was a considerable amount of money to learn a skill, to have my work put on telly on a channel that nobody watched, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So, you know, I, can I, I... That's my defence of that decision. Uh, one, that, yes, there's a bit of naivety in it, but... To it, it, I wouldn't be here defending the decision if I hadn't been given that opportunity. I and think. the New York Times would be employing you, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, but 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 that, that particular New York Times piece where I had a go at you know Russian money. In let's be honest, it was three four hundred quid a week. It wasn't millions of pounds <laughs> being paid yeah. to the fucking Tory Party or whatever. Do you know what I mean? But 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 the 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 accusation of hypocrisy is one that is valid <laughs> and one that I will take on the chin and go, yeah, me having a go at people taking Russian money, there is an inherent hypocrisy there. But fuck it. Well, the numbers <laughs> kind of do... Vet, I think the yeah. numbers do affect the, the, the moral condition, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, w I wouldn't do it in our present climate, sure. and, and rightly so, but uh, uh, it's very difficult to regret taking that choice yeah yeah i get that first comes the belly then comes morality thank you old Breck said <laughs> he said it in german but um <laughs> sounds better but um es kommt das fressen dann kommt die morale um but anyway what's uh, have we got another one we've got somebody over here oh the mic's coming down because the people in italy won't be able to hear you otherwise <laughs> just in relation go to ahead. russia today yes here we go but did they put rules on what your videos could be, or did nope. you have complete freedom? Complete freedom. They never saw a script before I filmed it, and then I would present them with what I had filmed, the completed version, and you can have it or you don't. They always had it. The only time they ever censored me was, uh, you remember the, sort of the Panama Papers thing, when everyone, it turns out everyone's a fucking tax-dodging bastard. It's like <laughs> headline news, as if we didn't already know it. Mm. And I called David Cameron a tax-dodging bastard or something, and they said, we're going to have to cut that line. That is 100% libelous. And that's under British right. libel law. Right, so because Russia Today, bastards that they were, were it was an off-com channel. You know, I mean, it, it was allowed to be here. Um, 
and I made a point of every now and then I would do something that was, uh, for example, uh, on gay rights, and I would deliberately make a point of going, I mean, if you look at fucking Russia and their, their, their version of gay rights, well, they don't exist. And Russia Today would air that. Um, so, so, so from that point of view, I had no, no, no qualms about taking the Russian regime to task or, or anything. They, they only ever censored me if I said something that could have landed me in court. So I sort of thank them for that, really. <laughs> Uh, hello. Yes, hello. Hi. Um, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on Nicholas Sturgeon and the whole situation with the union and independence, because obviously they lost that court battle. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, it's interesting, the SNP, because we, so we, we think of, I think in England, we think of the SNP as being sort of quite lefty and quite progressive because they're not Tories, right? They are the Scottish Nationalist, not na National Party, right? They, they are a fairly right of centre mm. party, really. But would you not say so? I I, no, I would, say, I would say that their core now is, is left of centre, definitely. But, only but, only but, uh, but I, would, I would argue only because of the independence mm. thing. No, which is I think kind it's of been growing. I think, I okay. think, I think that the leftward progression of it has, has been going for some time. My friends in... I was up in election uh, up there in election night. Uh, one of the the one where uh, where Corbyn did quite well. Yeah. But of course, in Scotland, the SNP yeah, yeah, yeah. and my mates were saying, you know, we haven't left we haven't left the Labour Party position. They've they've abandoned us. So there's a very much a, a sense of it being fundamentally. Yeah. Uh, I don't I know. Mean, I've, I've, I've never quite. Th I feel that they've just sort of scooped up. Oh, a, lo a, lo a load of voters, yeah. but going. Uh, uh -huh. They've also, um, and, and because they've got such a massive majority, there are some incompetent and, yeah. and, and, and not very good MPs who are probably of all kinds of political, uh, all places on the political spectrum. But I would say they're fundamentally. Yeah. But sorry, but the but question was more but about. With regards to independence, it's. Uh, I don't know enough about it, but I know what my instinct is. And you go, I want the union to remain a union. I would, I like the United Kingdom because I like things the way that I know them, right? Uh, uh, um, what's interesting is, is I think really that that real wave of, I think generally now if they had a referendum, I think they'd be off, right? Um, but I think that is a reaction to Westminster and the, reason, and, and the reason it's more of a reaction to Westminster is because the Tories are in power, right? See, I don't... I okay. Oh, sorry. But, 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 but what, what I would say is, what's interesting is, is the Tories are the Conservative and Unionist Party, right? That's their name. They are about the union. And when they leave power, there's a very good chance there won't be a union yeah. left. We'll have, and the reason there won't be a union left, I, I, think, I think us leaving the EU is, is, is a big... Well, it, the, you know, Scotland would be better off in the EU than it would be in the United Kingdom. How fucking mental is that? Um, that's insane. But it, uh, it's you could demonstrate that's the truth. I think. It, uh, I mean, that's my, my my feeling is that 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 has changed everything. The fact that since we left uh, the EU, um, Scotland, having voted massively to remain in it. Their situation has changed so much. I think they personally. Uh, I know you're not. I, I just me. wonder. It, I, I think. I, think I, I they suppose have a right my point is. I think if if a La if a Labour government got in and a Labour government that had an actual fucking Brexit plan, which is you know, let's be honest, a softer Brexit, should we say? You know, I, uh, um, that maybe that maybe Scotland wouldn't want to. Wouldn't there wouldn't be that impetus to? Well, perhaps, this. but you know, I don't. I don't see much evidence of that in. Uh, in what the Labour Party is saying at the moment, they're terrified of even committing. Well, they're terrified of the making, uh, of saying the word. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, the, to me, it seems like, like Brexit has worked, in the sense that we've left the EU, right? That's what that. If you, if you, I mean, the, the amount of people that I have spoken to that voted Leave, and the the problem is, is every one of them has a slightly different reason for wanting to vote leave right they've all got slightly different reasons so it's not a coherent project but everyone that voted to leave the eu 
did get one thing that they wanted, which was to leave the EU. We are not in it anymore. It's done. It's fucking happened. So I found it really interesting, Michael Gove the other day, talking about we must continue the Brexit project. It's like Brexit now can be anything we want it to be. And it seems absurd to me that now that we've left the EU, surely we now go and sit back round the table with them and go, right, how can we work together. You're a dreamer, aren't you? I know, I know, but it seems absurd to me that of course you go, like, this bit of Brexit doesn't work, this bit's a bit fucked, that bit's a bit fucked, how can we make it, um, make it, it easier? You know, but, I, but I, 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 would, I, would, I would caution against anyone uh, trying to win an election on a platform of we'll need, well, let's have another referendum to get back into the EU. It, it won't work. Um, I, I wasn't arguing for that. I was just, I mean, you know, there, there are different ways of, of, of negotiating our relation outside the EU. And it seems to, uh, sorry, this is not my gig. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> please, uh, please. No, 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 no,
got the world's head isn't in the sand anymore, which is progress, but we, we've, we, we haven't got that long left to make no, some fundamental yeah. changes, you know. Yeah. And it's again, when, when George, in it, and it was a genuine question, I said, you know, am I gonna, is this gonna kill me? Is climate change going to kill me? And he goes, probably. <laughs> and he's sort of, I think George is 56 or something like that. Yeah, he yeah. says, I'm 58. 59. I will see it in my lifetime. And he knows what he's fucking talking about. And you go, okay, so th this is scary. It's, it's no longer your children's children. It's you. It's you, you, you will see the beginning of, of planetary sort of shutdown. Um, that, that's fucking terrifying. It's a good punchline, that. Yeah, and with that note, <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to die. There's a gent on, this, on the front row, um, just to... I've got your mic, sorry. sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, go on. Hi, um, Mr. Guru Murphy. Oh, yeah. You, was that uh, life imitating art, or do you think he's trying to steal your act? Um, <laughs> ah, it, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Do I you think a there'll be a collaboration for, in the future? He didn't lose his job, did he? He just got suspended, right? Um, this is, uh, um, he, called, he called a politician a cunt, didn't he? I think, I think that was it. But it was off yeah. mic, right? Yeah. It wasn't on air. The MP had walked away. It wasn't libelous. It wasn't libelous. It wasn't libelous. It's demonstrably true. Um, and he apologised immediately, and I think the MP went, yeah, all is forgiven, don't worry about it. So I couldn't quite work out why he'd been suspended, if I'm honest. He didn't call anyone a cunt on air. And let's be honest, when we're all behind closed doors, we, we, we you know... Um, but it was a lovely moment, and it is one of those kind of moments. I, I, if you remember, I mean, it's kind of um, uh, it's quite, kind of quite normal now to sort of have behind the scenes footage and like bloopers and that kind of thing. But when I was growing up, it, it, I think you had one episode of this a year, maybe two. It was called "All Right on the Night." It'll Dennis be all right Norden. on the night, Dennis Norden, and and it was amazing because you didn't normally get to see it, so you'd get to see, you know, someone fucking up on EastEnders or someone blah 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 blah. But I do remember as a kid. It was always the newsreader ones that stayed with me because, and I suppose that's where Pi is born because mm -hmm. a newsreader is such, so, there's so much more of a formality to the way you present the news. So th there was one that I remember really well and it was a guy, he was behind the news desk and he'd go, um, and they gave him 30 seconds or 10 seconds and he spilt his tea fucking everywhere and he's going fuck fuck do, 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 do. and they count down five four shit three two one good evening do, do, do. and you go uh, uh, and you go that's pie in, in in a nutshell so i love that i do like you know that guru murphy thing if 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 Pi hadn't been around, you'd go, that would have been one of those sort of moments that you go, that could be it. And the other inspiration one, which I bring up all the time, but it's always worth it for anyone who's never seen this clip, it's Peter Sisson's um, stalwart BBC, you know, it's Peter fucking Sisson's, man, you know. And, uh, and it's a great clip on YouTube, and he, they're clearly gone to the sport or the weather, and he's sat by the desk, just, and he's watching, you can hear he's watching The Weakest Link, and he's just sat watching it. And he just goes, uh, Anne Robinson's clearly had some work done. And he, he goes, is that Anne Robinson? <laughs> She's even got new tits. And that's it. <laughs> and it's Peter Sissons. And, and I do believe that clip is where Pi was born. <laughs> I do, uh, that is pure Pi. She's even got new tits. <laughs> we got any, any others from a, 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 yes? You had one. On a serious note. Oh, there you um, go. Oh. With the mic. Oh. Now, on a serious matter, reason why everybody's going on strike, do you believe that they want to get rid of this government because what are they, how are they treating the British public? Yeah, well, I believe m most people on strike would... would I don't believe people are going on strike to change the government. I don't believe it's not... It's not it is a political act, striking, but it's not a p necessarily party political. It, it's to try and get change. I think, I think if you ask most people going on strike, if, if the Conservative government was serious about offering them a deal, they'd sit around and chat to them. So I don't think them being on strike is just to screw you no matter what. Uh, uh, um, 
I don't know if that answers your your question really, but but I, I don't see these strikes as sort of there will be banners going fuck the Tories. Do you know what I mean? They're, they they are sort of generally, I suppose that that you know anti the government of the time. But um, I don't know. What do you what do you? Well, I think I think it, it the primary cause of it is because people have no recourse, uh, other recourse to not even improving their living standards, achieving living standards. But but also when um, when you are when you whether that w whether this government is capable of doing that at all uh, for a variety of dogmatic heartless reasons I, I i seriously doubt so i but but also but, but i don't think it's their primary intention their primary intention is to change the conditions so that they yeah. have a, 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 an acceptable standard of living but also more and more it's becoming obvious that when your gas prices have just trebled and then british gas announces that their profits have just trebled mm. i mean it's in plain sight yeah that hypocrisy it's in plain sight what is wrong it's in plain sight when when then liz trust comes out and goes i'm going to cut corporation tax i'm going to cut the higher rate of tax trickle down economics bollocks it's like it didn't work in the 80s it's never trickle it's a myth it's a fucking myth and we all know it's a myth um so, so it's it's in plain sight now i think i don't think people mind struggling or putting some hours in or they know that some years are harder than others and 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 all of that shit but when you see your gas bills rising and your wages staying there and bp's profits go through the roof and the government then giving them a tax break because it you know uh encourages investment or whatever the fuck it is and you, you know and when you've got a government we're obsessed it, with kind of talking about uh, governments that are obsessed with talking about growth, you know, growth. You've got to grow the economy and growth. And do, do you th really think someone who's struggling to feed their kids gives a shit about these concepts? That that, that I'm sure they do. They of course they do affect this person, but actually, stop talking about growth. Well, talk to me about how you help me feed my children. You know, and also ultimately you can't have infinite growth on a planet of finite resources. So, you well, know, yeah, that's so it's how all deeply we've got it's, to change it. It's all bullshit. Um, I think we're, we're, we're now 20 in it, tw 28 minutes past eight. Oh, so wait, that was quite quick. I, I hope so. Yeah, I think so. One last question. Yeah, go on, make and it and a just corker. Just, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> just no pressure. It was an easy one on production. Thank you so much for tonight. It's been absolutely fascinating. Oh, I hope so. Uh, I hope it's been interesting. Uh, watching the uh, rapid, like, just the popularity of the YouTube channel take off from video one where everything was a little bit shaky, is it? <laughs> and then it just got better and better. I think I even messaged and said, I'll give you a microphone, please. Oh, I'm so it. sorry, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, was there anybody behind the camera? Do you sell tape and well, do you use an auto cue? When I, uh, okay. Uh, so w when I uh, worked with RT, I, I had a, a, a cameraman. It was the whole, the whole proper get up. And then when that's, uh, you, uh, I, I would always have be with a person. It makes life so much easier if there is a person uh, because it is pretty terrifying, especially when I put on a suit. I, it, it, it's obvious who, that, who I am, if you know me, you know. Uh, uh, um, but generally I'm, I do it as a, it's a lone wolf. It's me and I press record and I just, do it wherever I am. You, you talk about shit quality, though. The Liz Trust one that I did, it was a day, it was pissing down. It was the last one I did, pissing it down, and I found a five-minute window when it wasn't pissing it down, and I just dumped the camera down. I was like, I'm just, just do it. And it is shaking. I'm getting pissed on. So sometimes, but actually, I quite like it, because sometimes you go, oh, back to my roots. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? And, and, and even I imagine the people watching it go, oh, I remember when it used to be this shit. <laughs> um, with regards to the auto cue, I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> for, for about a year, I, 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 maybe two years, I, I, it didn't occur to me that there would be such a thing as an auto cue. It didn't occur to me. And I'd spend a day writing it, a day learning it, and then, you know, you'd 
you'd, it, we all had to be done through memory. So you'd get right near the end of the rant and then someone would walk past and do that. Or, nee, nee, or you'd forget where you are and you'd go, oh my. So sometimes I'd spend hours doing it. Now, yes, I use an auto cue. But what's interesting is, is I still try and learn it. I still try and know it. And actually just having it here, I always like stare behind the words and I'm still looking down the barrel. But they're just there as a reminder. And actually what it does is it just makes my shoulders drop going, I can get through this. I can get to the end. Don't worry about it. And just having that cru uh, uh, crutch there really helps with the performance of it. But I still spend several hours rehearsing it as if I didn't have that prompt. But I, I, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's saved my ass and it, it saved my sanity. Uh, um, because learning a 600 word monologue and having to perform it word perfect in the middle of the street was horrendous. Well, <laughs> well you haven't had an auto cue tonight. Uh, <coughs> well, no. You've done all right, though. Oh, so, uh, well, Nick, can, can, can we just th I thank you, Nick, uh, for you've been marvellous and you, you, you've, you've uh, taken control of, of this. So, so thank you very much. It's been lovely. But Nick and I are working together as well, actually. So that's very good. Thank Tom you. Walker, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Second bow.